Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I would like to share with you how I sampled my own piano and made it into an instrument in contact. One of the first things to consider when you actually make a piano is how you're gonna actually sample it. I chose to sample using major thirds. And so what I decided on doing was creating seven dynamic layers for a pedal down. And then I chose to do five dynamic layers for the pedal being up. I also recorded the pedal down sound. So when you, know, you press the pedal down and you kind of hear all those strings ring out a little bit and then the pedal up. And then I also recorded release triggers for every single note too as well. So I sampled my piano using two Rode NT5 microphones. They're just small diaphragm condensers and I put them in a spaced pair, roughly around three feet away from the strings on the piano. I set them up like this because I wanted to try and capture what it sounded like as the player. But when I was going through miking a upright piano, one of the things that I was battling a lot was the hammer noise and the clicking of the, the keys. It's especially augmented when you take off the front panel of the piano to reveal more of the sound. You get a lot more timbral detail in the strings, but at the cost of your tone getting muddied up by all these other sounds. So the whole process took around two or so hours with each layer taking around 12 to 15 minutes to complete. Again, it varied depending on the velocity, um, how heavy I was hitting it. You know, one of the things I thought about as I was going through is don't worry too much about making mistakes. You can redo it over again. I did do it to a click at 120 BPM to keep everything on time. In the next step, which I'll show you, I ended up actually changing some of the different velocity layers that I had recorded because sometimes it's inconsistent and you don't need to worry too much. Do your best to make it as consistent as possible, but you can sort of fix that in the editing and I'll show you how to do that. So let's just go into Nuendo or Cubase and I'll show you how I edited everything together and made it work and put it into contact. So right off the bat, when I was starting to record them, I, I made sure I understood what I wanted to do in terms of how many samples I wanted for both the pedal up sound as well as the pedal down sound. So I kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted to sample the piano, of course, in major thirds. And so that left me with 21 samples of the piano, roughly about a quarter of all the piano keys, which there are 88. So I did seven velocity layers for the pedal down. And you can see here I have like, you know, PP, P, MP, MP2. And then I also have, you know, the one for the pedal up too. So originally I started with audio like this, of course, across all the tracks. So one of the first things that I ended up doing to the, the audio was just denoising it. Because if you can hear, there's, there's definitely, uh, you know, a lot of noise being picked up. I just added RX-7 to it. Here we go. And so with this, I just, you know, essentially didn't want anything too crazy, but I wanted to go away. So we just hit learn. It figures out what it's got to do and boom, magic. And then uh, taking that off, I apply that. You can hear how all the sounds are much cleaner. I bounced that out into things like here. Of course, I changed the color and stuff like that, but these are all bounced out. That was the sort of first thing that I ended up doing. So the next thing I did was arrange them in a descending order. So they kind of went one after the other. The reason for that was so that I could hear the different dynamic layers. What I ended up doing after I had completed all of these layers was I actually uh, listen to them and um, just try to figure out, oh, okay, maybe I should move um, this one over here or this one down here. And I sort of, it was like a jigsaw puzzle. After I did that, I went and I tried to find, and it's a good thing to put them like this because uh, it helped me hear like as if you're getting progressively louder, you know? And so you can hear. You 
and you can hear how that volume level, you know, the, the performance intensity gets a little bit louder. So I did that, of course, with all the notes. Now, one difference you'll see here in the rendered version, you notice I was saying before, I did only sampled it 21 times. I've seen in the other videos where you can put it into contact and you can stretch it out. I felt that it might just be easier to stretch it out in the beginning, mainly for the reason of subtly tweaking the pitches of the notes. So I, I went on all the notes of my piano and I recorded them with an app called Pano Tuner. I played every single note. I recorded and I wrote down on my iPad what were those notes. And I, I wrote down the general frequency that it was at. So then what I did afterwards is I went back into the DAW and I edited the notes so that they would be in the correct pitch. And so yeah, that's what I did. Um, to sort of take the samples a little bit further rather than just pitching them down because then things would be slightly out of tune. And so I, I just wanted to make it more accurate to the piano that I recorded it on. Now, I do want to talk about a specific thing in Cubase or Nuendo if you are using this program. Say, for example, uh, I went through all of these different sounds. I, I listened to them like, you know, one after the other like this and then moving over to the right. And then I was like, okay, I just arranged them. So I, you know, I did this. I'm just going to mess it up for you guys. So you, you can see that the naming convention got all messed up, right? What I would do is just double click on here, name it to whatever I wanted it to. So just say, okay, I want it to just be P. And I would hold shift and then press enter and you'll see how all the names change. Huge time saver. And then the other thing that I did in terms of renaming all the notes so that they had the specific note name, which is really important when you put it into contact. So contact can recognize and auto map the notes. Um, you see he has an A minus one and so on and so forth. Well, originally when I put it in, it didn't have that. It just had the velocity layer. And so you could see how this, would, you know, it needed to be managed. When trying to get these notes to have note names across the piano was I would just simply select all the notes. And then I went up to edit and then rename objects. So I'd rename the objects. And so I'd go to the second one here. I click on this little blue thing. And then for this one, this was the lowest one. So I did A minus one, simply hit OK. And then we have that just to show you and demonstrate how that sort of thing worked. And so, yeah, and then I went in and I, this took a long time, but I went in and I just renamed all of them. Uh, another important thing is I created these little groups, these markers. So it just made it easier to organize. And so it didn't get too messy. So I want to show you the last little step here. After I had all my sounds, you know, trimmed up and nice, uh, the last thing to do is sort of export them. So I would just go on to one velocity layer here, select all of them, you know, just dragging horizontally, go to file, export, and click on selected events. That brought up this dialogue. I just wanted to just the single path instead of the master effects. And then I made all my folders and then I just simply export the uh, samples into there. Once you're done that, then you really want to get um, this thing started. So first thing that I did uh, was download this template, uh, put a link to it on this video. There was a couple of issues that I was having when trying to use this program, especially when trying to drag things on. You can see how it just disappears when I click on that. One thing that I found helped was if you dock this thing to whatever screen like that, that can help too. Another thing you can do is just click on that. What it does is it basically always on top. It just makes it so that contact doesn't disappear when you click on something else. And uh, and so I have this issue and I still have this issue where, you know, I'm trying to drag it onto actually onto right here, but um, it's, it doesn't work unless I go like right on the edge. I have no clue why. Anyways, here is the script. Thank you again, uh, Dave Hillowitz and uh, Angus Roberts Carey for creating this script. It really made everything super, super helpful. And my intention here is just to share all this and just put out a bit more information on how I tried to learn how to do it so that anybody else trying to do that can learn from it. So what I wanna do is quickly explain what's going on here and then we'll actually start importing some sounds. Go to the expert view like that, just on the top here because you're an expert now. All you need to understand here is note without pedal. These are for round robins, all of them here. If you're not having round robins and you're just having velocity layers, which in a way almost function like round robins, you can do that and just put it into this group. And so this is the ID, it'll say zero. And that is actually corresponding with, if you scroll down here, the numbers that will be over here. This part here is basically stating how many groups. So there's one, two, three, and four. 
But anyways, you put in all your samples that are the pedal off sounds in here. And so for me, I just put them all into this note without pedal group. And then all the sounds with the pedal down, I put them into this one here, which is number four. And so what I ended up doing was just simply going like that. It was really simple. And then I just changed this to one and I changed this to one. I only had one release trigger group, which was right here. So this was eight. So I just changed this over to eight and changed this to one. I had multiple different um, pedal down and pedal up sound. I had four round robins for that. So I just left it like this. But if you just have one, you can just change that to 12 or whatever group you want to put it in and then just change this part here too. Last thing you want to do is just hit apply and then you're good to go. Click on mapping editor. And now you're actually going to get all the sound, uh, the actual place where you're going to put in the samples. Make sure you have this selected, selected groups only. If you have this selected, whatever group I select right here, it will only show the samples in that group, okay? So I'll just show you an example of putting in some of these note with the pedal off. Here we go. So let's just start with the quietest thing. I'm just gonna move this over to the other screen, but you'll get the idea. You know, I just click on them uh, and then drag them on. Now, again, you notice that I was talking about, like I can't just drag it onto here. I kind of have to go over to the edge a little bit. So once it kind of shows up on the screen, if I move it up, it's going to stretch them across the keyboard. For my purpose, I did 88. So I just dragged it so it looked like this and simply placed it like that. The next thing you want to do is select all of them. Right click, go to auto map setup. This little part here is basically looking at the stuff I put into the name and it's saying, okay, well, what do you want me to do with this, this information? So most of the stuff is ignored. The thing that's really important to me is the actual note name. I set that to set it to single key and I hit apply and I just did close. Now, one bizarre thing is that a couple of them on the end go skewed, but the other ones, as you'll see here, it's mapped just fine. So D sharp two, D sharp one, it's all good here. So then what I honestly had to do is just drag this. I don't know why you have to do that, but you have to. And then that's simply how I got all of my sounds into there. If you've got whatever amount of velocity layers, you got to select the one that's sort of highlighted. So sometimes if you can't find it, like if, if, if it's not visible, just select it again and just go up to the edge. And then, yeah, I just brought it down. Now, when you're bringing in a bunch of different sounds, for example, so I'm like, okay, now I want to put an MP, right? So I'm like, okay, here I select all of them. When I drag it in now, okay, cool. Do the same thing, make it the same size, auto map setup, set to single key, hit apply, okay. You'll notice again that it does that fun thing where it's, you know, I have to move it over. Okay, so make sure that when you have these sounds, you don't want them to overlap on the same one you can see here. So this is, uh, for example, 36 to 127. If this is, this is 34, so there's no issue. But if I had it to 36 to 36, that means that if I happen to play 36 in terms of the, the MIDI, it's gonna be play both of the samples. So we don't really want that. But instead of going in like being really meticulous, you can go and put all your dynamic layers just roughly where you want it. And then just simply select all of them. They go to auto map functions and then go to resolve overlapping velocity ranges. And now you'll see this goes up to one and 31. And then this one goes up to 32, 127. So if you're putting in a lot of different velocity layers, it just saves you a lot of time, you know, just keep adding them like that. And then, you know, once you're done this one, go on to this one, add your sounds into there. The release triggers that I did, pretty simple. I mean, I, I did 88 release triggers. So each of them, all the keys, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Yeah. So I just had all my sounds and, you know, I just dragged them over. So I did that. I'm going to show you what I ended up coming up with. I didn't do any of the graphics because I was lazy. Um, I will do one in the future, but, uh, yeah, here, let me show you what my whole thing looked like. So I had my five velocity layers, uh, and then my seven velocity layers and then my release triggers. Oh, I put them in two for some reason. I don't know why with the pedal down. I noticed that when I, you can see if, if I press the pedal down, you can actually see it voices, right? So I take it off now in this one place, but I press it down number 13, which is this one here. Uh, oh, this is actually a Ran Robin, right? So I actually placed them. This is, there is a bunch of different sounds, but they're just all on E3. That's where they're on. Uh, it sounds like I'm playing Battleship. Yeah, and then so I also did the ones for the pedal up. It's kind of like, it's kind of weird why the pedal up is, I mean, in order to, you have to hear it in order to really make it feel more realistic, but it is kind of strange, especially, you know, as a piano player, like no piano player wants that 
up sound. I just put it in there anyways, but that's how you do it. Make sure you're saving up here. So I had to constantly go save edited instrument and then, you know, re overwrite and stuff like that. But don't worry that that's not going to cause any issues. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. The part that I really wanted to showcase was just how to get the sounds in there. So yeah, here is some of the sounds that I have. So if you've gotten up to now, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Consider subscribing because I'm going to be putting out some more of this stuff soon in the near time, now that I have some time. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself an awesome day. Take care. Bye.